to um, begin the meeting. Make the motion to start the meeting. Okay. All right. I second. And okay. Nine oh one. You said hand it back. I uh. Oh, Rebecca. Yeah. Do we need to roll call vote? Uh yes, I would try to try to say to do that. Okay. Um. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. Jim, I. Aye. Jason, not all in favor. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, Harry, and I. Rebecca Jerzyk, I. James Smith, I'm from Alford. Jordan, I. Nice. Okay. Number one, administrative um, approval of the August 11th meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Or any discussion? We have six towns here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's our that's a quorum. That is okay. well. I mean, it's the we've done it before with six. Okay. Okay. So can we make a motion mm -hmm. to accept the minutes of the August eleventh, two thousand twenty-three? Well, second. Oh, I did the minutes. So I I'll make a motion. Okay. Any seconds for? Yep. Right Unless there's any debate on changes. Mm -hmm. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Jim, yes. Rebecca, yes. Aye. Romeo, yes. Smith, yes. <laughs> okay. And Terry? I was not in attendance at the last meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is the public health nursing update. I don't have much other than uh, in the thick of getting ready for our clinics that start on Monday. As of right now, we have 386 people pre-registered. Um, COVID, not sure when that's going to be available. As soon as it is, we'll update everybody and add it to the clinics. Um, we are not going to offer our speed vaccines because I talked to Commonwealth Medicine, who does our billing, and they cannot bill for Medicare Part D, so they have to go through their pharmacy. Um, texts are still around, COVID's still around. Uh, big car seat event tomorrow in Lee. Um, I went to an event in July, and um, Trooper Brown, I think he's out of Northampton, he is like community outreach, education, something, I don't know his exact title. So he has coordinated this whole thing. So I think there's going to be seven or eight texts there. I had to sign up genius. Um, so I think I'll be out of car seats after Saturday. Oh, yes. And Lee Bank graciously bought five combination seats, which I only have one of. So I'm very grateful for that, for Lee Bank, <laughs> making that donation. So um, rain or shine tomorrow. So I'm praying the weather got through it to us. <laughs> That's all I have. I mean, I have a couple. I don't have not so much questions, <laughs> but Ruby's FYI, Ruby's trying to get in. So we we are on the hook of purchasing COVID vaccines this year. I think there was conversation that we were going to get a supplement mm, of yeah, no. doses, but we actually have to pay for that. But that's okay, right? We have money in the coffers to to start purchasing that. I think the trick is is you know, I was talking to the staff about you know, trying to figure out an estimated number of doses to purchase. And so and I think there's some ideas as they roll out clinics about trying to get an inventory, then we can order a certain amount. And then if we, we feel the demand's still there, we can still order more. Right. I, I just, I, I don't want to purchase $9,000 no. worth of COVID vaccines and we're sitting at 3,000 it goes to the waste. What's so. the minimum you can buy and how fast is a turnover if you're starting to run out? So are you, we have an account with Pfizer. Okay. So we'll just go with Pfizer again. I think they're the cheapest. Um, and it's a two-day turnaround time. Oh, great. It's really quick. There's no minimum. So if oh, I wanted okay. to order one vial, they'll send me one vial. So there's, there'll be single dose vials. We'll have to draw up. Um, they're not cheap. 
they, you're saying they, they, they will be single dose vials. Yes, they won't be drawing up. We will be drawing up. They're not pre-filled syringes. It's a lot more money for pre-filled syringes. I bet it is. A lot. Um, so with who? With who? We'll figure it out. I think maybe we can have like a big clinic at some point. Um. What happened? Remind us, Joe and Jane, how much it is per, was it 10, is it 10 doses per vial? Is that no, it's one dose per oh, vial. Oh, it's one dose per vial. How much it is per dose? Do you so remember? Like 110, $115 per <laughs> yeah. dose. Yeah, well, so it's I know pretty, it was up there. It's, really it's a lot. So, you know, we, we get, you know, we, we, we could spend near north of 10 grand if we don't. But, you know, what? there's a lot of people that are going to be offering them. I think we should. Yes. You know, we'll yes. figure out how, how much we should spend and if there's some, you know, and, and we're going to get those reimbursements. There's a delay on the reimbursements, but, you know, like the, we have money in the account because we have vaccine revenue, you know, the, the FY24 contracts just went out. So as that comes in, we're, we're going to be ahead of the game, but it, we also don't want to be dropping 15K on yep. vaccines and 200, you know, seven grand just sitting there because all of a sudden people don't want vaccines anymore. But I'm pretty intrigued because as the numbers are increasing, we're seeing more people masking. Yeah. There's more cases coming up. Yeah. So I think this may be a good opportunity to make that happen. Yeah, I think the older population definitely will want it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, we might have to do it. Maybe Jane and I were talking maybe at a Saturday clinic somewhere. Uh, maybe when we're done with all of our, our scheduled clinics and having another another one somewhere you know so. how are you going to offer the possibility of people that are housebound yep That's so, perfect. so yeah so right now the so first shipment of the flu that we got from um sanofi was 90 doses of regular and 90 doses of high, high dose so um i thought it was going to be able to jane's away at an fda conference the second week, so like the 20th, the 20th, I don't know, whatever the date range is. Um, but our second shipment is not getting shipped until the 20th. So we don't have it until the 22nd. So that rules out starting homebound then. So we could figure that out. But I do have um, Beth who helped us last year. Mm -hmm. She said she'll do homebound. Um, oh, nice. Reach out to Beth, um, okay. Stephanie, and see if she's available. So, okay. Figure it out. Thank you. Yeah. Are you gonna will you connect with the senior centers or elder services to figure out who needs the like how what's the process of figuring out people? Who yeah, they already do. That's how I, you know, make contact with most of these people. I have a whole spreadsheet of everybody I went to last year okay. and I'm gonna reach out to them. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. and then um also we've been working with um there's been a group of us, so CHB, Berkshire Regional, us. The Berkshire Health Systems have been working on this um, uh, Get Vaccinated Berkshire website. And so that hopefully will be up by the beginning of October. So okay. that way, and all of our clinics will be listed on there and people can click it and it will go right to our registration. So I think that that will be a help as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to help promote homebound vaccinations. We can send out a press release. Yeah, definitely. If, if you have a flyer or if you have some sort of advertisement. Mm -hmm. Did we do something last year? No, it was it was sort of like we were just coming out. Yeah. Doing a, a little bit here and there because we didn't have all the staffing in place. Yeah, I think I'm also going to put it on my list. Um, the PCPs, the primary care. Yeah, yeah. And let them know. Yeah. Um, yeah, homebounds, I mean, it's one of those programs, I think we talked about this before, like from a safety perspective too. You know, we don't want one nurse going yeah. up somewhere at East Palm, and, you know, yeah. knocking on a door, not knowing. So we got we, we want to try to pair that up to a point where it's, um, you know, we'll have to figure that out. But Well, I think that's why it's good for the Council on Aging's to be involved because they they know mm -hmm. what people yeah. are going to yeah. into. Right. right. Yeah, I'd like to grow our program. I think I did about 40 plus last year. So yeah. yeah. That's great. Um, you may have already answered this, mm -hmm. but when you get the COVID vaccinations, will you be 
adding them on to the existing flu clinic? Yes. Okay. So if somebody wants a flu sh a, a COVID vaccine, it's easy click of a button when they check in. They don't have to do a separate registration. They can oh, okay. easily be added on. Okay. They can easily take off flu if they don't want flu and they just want COVID. It's it's pretty easy. Okay. Um, color's gotten better. And okay. that's not too com. I mean, you've done it all before. It's not complicated. But it's not complicated yeah. to yeah. have. Because you have three different types of flu vaccines, right? We have state supply. We have the regular dose for six months plus, and then we have this, the high dose, which is for 65 and bottom, okay. subscribe plus. Okay, so yeah. Well, that will make it easy. Mm -hmm. And you'll see a change on our our um, on our on posters. Um, we already have several, um, we only have two doses left of the, the egg free, according, if, if everyone who's allergic to eggs is actually asking for it, and it's in, come, with this shipment, we have to wait until the 22nd. So we'll be reaching out to them. I know, I, they don't know when it's gonna be shipped. When I talked to them yesterday to see about having our next shipment moved up, there's no date when they're shipping the egg toy. So we'll it could be with the third, probably with the third shipment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Joe. Anything else? Okay, uh, old business. Uh, we'll start with the articles of operation. Is that where you guys want to start? Well, um, or do you want to? We already, yeah. Okay. Um, let's start there. So I actually went through, um, and it's in the minutes. I put in the minutes kind of what the, um, based on the conversation, kind of what the changes were. Um, and the what you have before you shows <laughs> shows the base documents in um, in black. My changes are in red, and um, the blue was feedback from Pat, which was the only person who really had engaged with it. Um, and so um, I. So I know it's a little bit hard to read, and I don't know since there's a lot of people aren't here. If we want to um, kind of, we can discuss the changes. There was a couple of questions that I had. One was um, on page three. Um, one of Pat's comment was um, under the board responsibilities. Um, participate in adoption of FB PhD wide policies and recommendations. So that she said, should this be approved rather than participate in? It's in the blue comment box. Oh, yeah. Which I felt was reasonable, but we hadn't talked about it. So I didn't change it on the... Um, Can you give an example of what a policy might look like that would impact the collaborative? So... I think that I don't know because it's a really good question. Mm. Um, you know, because we're you know this is not a governing board where we're setting regulations or anything. That's that's a that's a town specific thing. Um, you know, we we could set a policy. I'm trying to think real quick. It's a really good question, actually, because the towns that we're doing inspections in we could set a policy that this is how we're doing the inspections, right? But that's not a collaborative-wide policy. So, and the other thing is, is I believe that that was actually in our IMA. So that's the other reason yeah. why it's hard to change. So you know, maybe the governing board could set a policy, you know, remember we were talking before way back in the day where, when, remember when Sandusfield and Tierenham was going to join the club, which we had to change the IMA anyway. You know, you can't, we can't make major changes to the IMA without all the towns redoing it or you know, things like that. And we were having a discussion about looking into making sure that we're not diluting capacity and all that kind of stuff. I guess we could look at that could be an example of a policy as I look at before the collaborative expands to new towns, we're going to have a working group to kind of identify certain things that don't put us at risk for the PAG grant and policy. Maybe that's an example. Um, I, mean, I don't know. Anyone else have any thoughts and ideas? It's 
it's an interesting governing board because each town is still independent of itself. Mm -hmm. You know, the governing board's kind of put together for the PAG program. You know, we don't set policy for, you know, Lee or Lennox or Stockbridge. We don't set fees. We could put together, you know, a, a working document to promote certain things to be more consistent, but like that sort of like that, that's where we'd be. And I know Mike's on the call. I don't know if he's seeing if, if he's fielding calls like that across the state on other PHEs about setting policies for the collaborative. I'm no, not really sure. So the way that this could go is in these two ways that um, this collaborative board would either form subgroups to advise the executive team to make a decision, or we could have a, a majority vote as a governing board to to adopt to the policies that that's the question is one of those two options is how I like the first option you talked about advising the executive to, committee to they, bring it up to the full governing board for adoption okay I think that's a good system of checks and balances is that too clunky to so I was going to say um, a subgroup to make recommendations to the governing board for um for full board of approval. Okay. Is that something that everybody else agrees with? Mm -hmm. Um that way I think it it would take less time in these meetings, you know, to hash out yeah. language mm -hmm. of a policy that could take, you know, the full hour and a half. So Right. And then the other um, one was, um, I did move some things around, but it was all based on what we had talked about. And then, oh, um, oh, so Pat had a, had a question at the very, very end, and, and it was like, these operating articles will be reviewed at least annually at the start of the fiscal year and may be altered, amended, repealed. Um, by discussing con or consensus of majority. And so I said during any board meeting and Pat wondered if we should just do this annually. And then I, I was like, no, if it's a living document, then I feel like anytime there needs to be changed, we didn't want to chain ourselves. Now, that being said, we did get feedback from Rich Mucci on this. Um, Mike, you were on that conversation. Can you explain to us um, just his comments on that? You know what? I'm I've I've just been transferring over to this computer, so I haven't followed the last few minutes. I'm sorry. Oh, no. So, um, Rich Mucci, we did send this version to him, and the the concept I think was foreign to him of why we would have articles of operation. Right. Uh, I feel like for me, it's clear. It, it's and I I think for the I think we have buy in from the collaborative, but I just wasn't sure if you know what what his concerns were. Well, he, I, I know this much. I, I don't know everything about what his concerns were, and I can actually reach out to him and get him to join up with us right now. But um, uh, he is concerned that there's that there's no need to have this in addition. And I explained to him that you have more than just the PHE program that you're working on together as a group. And um, what I had suggested was maybe making your articles that you're talking about right now as perhaps exhibit C or whatever the next exhibit number is that would be on your uh, underlying IMA. And I haven't heard back from him on that suggestion. But I, I, I could reach out and ask him if he could join us if you want. Well, I mean, you could. Or if I can just take five minutes and explain to you how we kind of got here. You know, this is this articles of um, operation is something that this board has been working on for a year plus. So I don't want to dismiss all the work that we put into this and, and how it kind of came to fruition. I'll, I'll bring up Tritown for an example. So Tritown Health District is a formal health district. When we redid our IMA, which Diane Romeo was part of years ago through the towns, the three towns, you know, it's a generalized intermunicipal agreement, you know, so it's like just a, a generalized agreement. The Tritown boards at that time wanted some type of a cliff notes, which they had 
jurisdiction over to set certain standards, you know, meetings, subcommittees, and things like that, that the board had control over, which doesn't contradict the existing IMA. And so like the IMA is a very generalized legal document that the, you know, all 12 towns have signed. It'd be almost impossible to make any changes to that without starting opening that whole thing back up. So this board wants a, like a summary. So we want to keep going back to the IMA reviewing the legal document, so on and so forth. It gives us something easier to follow along on. And, and we, I, I know this is redundant, but it's helpful to the board to kind of expand a little bit within the framework of the IMA. And it's, you know, we've been working on this for a year plus. Yeah, you know, and I, unless there's like legal concerns in this governing board doctor, this articles doesn't contradict the spirit of the IMA. I think it helps define our roles um, more clearly and what the responsibility of the collaborative board is. Um, I do, I mean, I know we've put a lot of work into it, but despite that, I, I think it's, it's really helpful. So. Uh, yeah, and 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 that's kind of what I had taken away from my prior conversations with with Jim and with Jane, um, and that's that's why I went back to him and said, "How about if we uh, just incorporate this as an exhibit into the the IMA that that we have for the PHE group?" And that's what I'm waiting to hear back from him on. Is that something that that I, are you comfortable doing that? It, you you still have your document, but then. You, you know the document going one way, which is your your we'll we'll, we'll call it your uh, uh, your articles. We'll call that your articles, and the articles would 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 be their own document, but they would be a an exhibit to the IMA, and so the IMA would refer to those. And I and what I'm thinking of talking to him, and what you know, once I hear what his initial response is, my next response back was going to be, how about if we refer to the articles in the IMA as the working governance document for the for you know the, the group as a whole. I just don't want to get into a situation where we change the language and because it's an exhibit on the IMA that we have to get the IMA resigned. That's I think what everyone wants to avoid. Okay. Okay. That's that's very clear. Uh, look, I mean, and I, yeah, uh, one idea. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I, I was just going to suggest, Jim, that that we that 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 you and I and and uh, Jane and 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 you, Jim, continue to work on it and have something finalized for the next meeting that you have. Yeah, and this is a, you know we still got some time. And one of my ideas is we you know our initial IMA is a three year term. We're coming up on that next year. So as we finalize this articles, we could put some type of language in on the updated IMA as says exhibit C, articles of operation. Then by that time, we can give copies of this to the select boards and boards about when they re-sign everything just to show them like this is our governing board document. And because we are coming up on year, well, I don't know when year three expires, but it feels like it's coming soon at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I think from my perspective, like this is really hard to read with all of the changes. I I think I feel confident that it was in the spirit of what the conversation was. What I'd like to do is be able to, like, have you guys look at this, and maybe not right now, but give me feedback. If you feel that there's something I didn't quite get, we'll leave that change in there. Um, but otherwise, I'll just accept the changes so that when we're when we're really talking about this and making final decisions, we're not seeing that I reformatted, mm -hmm. you know, the top line, um, which I so. And I think my last point, Mike, is um, and I, and I only speak for myself here, as one person of many. You, you know, we're we we created this governing board through this collaborative PHE program. You know, we have the IMA. We, we we met compliance coming out of the gate. And now we have this like organic feeling governing board. Yes, we have obligations to meet the contract standards of DPH PHE, but like this governing board should have the fluidity 
to, to do different things within the framework without asking permission and someone telling us, no, you can't. You know, if there's a legal issue that people want to go on record and say, it's our legal opinion that you shouldn't do this because of X, Y, Z, you may compromise PHE. Sure, I'm open for that, but this governing board has been meeting for two plus, I don't know, this is like a lifetime now, two plus years, and we're coming up with new ideas, new initiatives, and like we need to keep the spirit of that organic, you know, evolution within this room. I I am I saying that clearly? Yeah, I I totally. Let me just tell you, I I totally get that because, um, I think I think that you all know that I've been the the shared services coordinator for the Islands Group since its inception, and we we met for the first time in February of 2020. And the program didn't begin until July of 2020 through through COVID. We met just before COVID. Actually, there was one case on the island at, uh, when, when I went down there for the first time. So that's how far back we go. We go back like you do. And, and I have the same concerns. And I'm hearing it from the group one, the original you know, the, the original 14 grant holders that, that, that started this program. We're we're all feeling exactly what you're what you're saying, and I've been expressing that to DPH over the past couple of weeks more and more because it's becoming intrusive. I feel with with my island group that they're that they're that they're actually holding us back from doing some things because they want us to satisfy uh, this this particular item before we can move on to that that item, and we are so far ahead of what DPH wants, and I keep defying them so i know exactly what you're saying because if we did what they want we'd be held back and you're in exactly the same position because you're you know you're not one of the new groups that's trying to figure out what you're doing you know what you're doing you get great leadership you get lots of experience out there and you get your own thing going just like the islands do so i hear you and that 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 message is something i will take back and i'm glad to hear it from you because now i can say it's not just us it's 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 all it's it's both ends of the state. It's it's as east as you can get with the islands, and it's as west as you can get with with Tri Town. Everybody's feeling it, so that gives me something to work with. And Jim, I will I, I'm going to use you, you guys if that's okay as part of my discussion when I have those discussions with them, because there's so many things that we can be doing that 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 because we have to dot the eyes for them, it's slowing us down. Yeah, and and I you know like. Like we often do better in public health on capacity and collaborations, but like we we've done a pretty good job over the years. And of course, we need resources and help. I mean, without PHE, we wouldn't have a nurse program. You know, like we are all struggling with that. You know, we are all relying on limited contracts that did the bare bones minimum. So we respect that. But I also don't want to feel like there's a bait and switch going on because at the beginning of all this. Like I had to reach out to Rebecca and all these other people to start coming up with conceptual ideas way before PHG. And like, you know, we presented to select boards, we presented to boards of health. They trust what we've said to get us to this point. And I can't be feeling like there's a bait and switch going on. Well, now that you're signed the dotted line, mm -hmm. you're now you're expected to do X, Y, and Z. Because towns, they'll start they'll start to pull out of these programs and we don't want that to happen. There needs to be a trust factor. Just like Terry said, who's on the select board slash board of health to notice, like you've got to trust what we're doing. We know what we're doing. We just need the resources to do it. Exactly. I, 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 public health here. I, I hear you and I welcome you to my, to my world. <laughs> that's, that's, and, and I'm saying that, I'm saying that not as MAHB, I'm saying that now as the, as the shared services coordinator for the islands, that this has been, I know exactly where you guys are coming from, because I'm feeling the same thing. And, and on the MAHB side, I attend a lot of these meetings with a lot of the groups, and I'm starting to hear it. And it's coming from the original groups that want that 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 are feeling like there's too many conditions now that are being applied that weren't there when we started. And, Mike, to that yeah. to that point, um, I don't want to cut you off. Are you? No, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Ahead. Um, I know at the last meeting you said that um, our collaborative. This is the first collaborative that you'd heard of working on articles of operation. But has the island has the islands? started their own document similar to this? 
we're doing we we have a really weird situation because we have an we we have an MOU that hasn't been signed yet and we've been working on it since February of 2020 <laughs> and and it's not even an IMA and I, and I'm not going to be able to get them to do an IMA a formal IMA because if we do that it's going to that's going to that's one of those conditions that that that's in fact that's the biggest condition that I'm referring to uh, without without having set it up to this point, is that you know that we have to have an IMA, and it says December thirty first, and I've told them that that's a deal breaker for the islands because we're not going to just like you guys, we have fiercely um, protective boards of health on the islands, and uh, they all want this to work, but they don't want to be bound by something that someone from off island is telling them you have to do it this way. So what we're actually doing there very interestingly is we're we're turning we're turning Martha's Vineyard into a district because they've had they have six towns six boards of health 18 members six health directors and of those six health directors uh on on December 31st five out of the six directors many of who have been there for 30 years uh five out of six will will have turned over oh wow. In the last in the last six months, so they're they're undergoing a huge metamorphosis of retirements. So they've got these 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 very young new directors that are very good, but they're really ripe for becoming some sort of a district. So we're going to try to pull some kind of an experiment there. At that point, they're going to need an IMA because they they're going to be under Dukes County. You'll yeah. notice. You'll notice that it's no longer called the Nantucket Group. It's now called the Dukes County Group because we've shifted to the county and the county in their charter has a mechanism for forming a countywide board of health without affecting the, the, the autonomy of the six different boards. So it's going to be an association of boards of health and yeah. it's kind of a, a new model that we're, that we're flying. But it's... These 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 regulations that they're hitting us with that, that didn't exist when we all started are slowing that process down and getting in the way. So I, I've got I've got a lot of a lot of attention from DPH because they really want to have this happen, and it's not going to happen if they keep going. And I can use that argument the same the same I'm using it with with us. I can use it for you guys when I talk to Sam and 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 to the folks at DPH saying just like. Just like the Dukes County group, the 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 Tri Town group is is functioning on all cylinders, is moving forward very well, but is is feeling hamstrung by by some of these new conditions. So let's let, let's keep this going. Let's let's keep this discussion going. And and I've you know I've shown you some cards that I haven't shown to anyone else at this point, uh, except DPH knows. But I haven't talked about this with any of the other groups. But it's something that we're seeing. I'm seeing it because I get to go to all of the groups and I'm seeing it among the older groups, the, the, the more mature groups that have that have been functioning and that are doing things in a higher level like you guys are. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, do you wanna say anything else about the articles of operation or should we? I don't think so. And I wanna just be, um, um, Diane has to leave at, Here's at 10. Oh, I thought it was 10. I can, I can get over to St. Peter's that day. And if I walk in after the cast, that's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go to the okay, leadership committee elections. Um, we're a small group today. Do you want to postpone this mm -hmm. until? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I said to Jane on the way that they win, we should maybe, we, we may not meet in October because I think these guys are working a lot of hours. Okay. And, you know, maybe it makes sense to put it on in November to do elections okay. for effective date of January. So when we start talking terms, right. it'd be okay. a clean sure. kind of calendar year yeah. kind of thing. Maybe, maybe that makes more sense. That does make sense. Plus. Okay. All right. That's a good plan. Uh, fiscal year 24 public health excellence work plan update. It was approved. Yay. Yay. That's great. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. This is, the fun, <laughs> this is like the, the sun shiny part of the, of the, um, of the, it was approved um, with a part-time. Um, we have equity access coordinator and 
and uh, Mike, I, I'm gonna I'm looking at some different job descriptions and trying to nail that out. We might go back to them and be like, look, this is actually what we want to call it, but they'll do the functions that are listed in the um, work plan. I think that they'll be amenable to that. Um, but yeah, that's exciting. You yeah, mean no. in the job description so that folks know what exactly they're applying for since equity access coordinator is nebulous? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I like that plan. Jane, did you look at what I sent you? Did you did you have a chance oh, to? Look at no, I didn't. I I was in the field a lot yesterday, so I must have missed it. So okay. I will. I'll take a look and make sure that I can take a I look. Sent, I sent you a job description for what I think we called our public health educator. Oh, and, and, yeah, and 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 what we've done there is it's it's I I could actually share it with you at some point, but we did a we did a video that is uh, that's being put on all of the social media outlets on the web pages and being shown oh. at various meetings that that is in Portuguese uh, in in Brazilian Portuguese on on um, tick prevention. And that was our first thing that we did for the islands. Um, and we aimed it at the migrant workers that come there to, to, that have never seen a tick before they, because they've, they, they've never been exposed to them before, especially like they have on the islands. And um, we've been distributing it among all of the, 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 the various working groups to the, to the, to the companies that the landscaping companies for them to show and and all of that and that was our first our first piece of work that we did but um we, we're calling it a, a he's he's trilingual so so we had no problem getting that approved because they have a trilingual population on the islands and uh but but it's an it's a it's a very unique type of position health educator public health educator take a look at it T take parts of that for what you're doing because so it's, I have a file and I have, I think that will be four different distinct yeah. um, jobs. And so I'm hoping to bring back to the board or work. At, I'm hoping to like take all of the pieces that we feel like the staff needs, what we talked about here, um, what's in our work plan and come up with something. Right now it's just funded part-time. And so the other thing that we're doing is trying to reach out to see if there's other ways of pulling that together so that we can have a full-time person, but maybe we'll find someone with like quote unquote mother's hours, right? Maybe there'll be <laughs> someone who who wants to have, um, anyway, it's, it's okay. a part-time position. So hopefully I'm hoping, cause it's in the budget now, um, that we can at least get it posted sometime in November after our next, assuming we cancel October, we're hoping to hammer out a job description and we can send it out, get feedback. And cause we don't want to wait too, too long then we'll be behind the eight ball of actually spending our money. Okay. And so <laughs> yeah. equity access coordinator and the work plan, there was a shared inspector, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's the next that's thing. The, oh, okay. Sorry, well, I didn't mean take, to jump in. Take this. Yeah. So um, I want to introduce everyone to Jason Dragonetti. Um, mm -hmm. So Jason actually is Tricon's full-time health agent. Mm -hmm. um, been with us for six plus over eight years. Um well Jason can advocate for himself, but as you know, I, I take the pleasure of introducing that Jason uh, applied for the shared agent position for the collaborative. And he was offered the position and accepted it uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, not many people know uh, you know I was waiting to announce it today. So it's I won't say it's bittersweet because I'm still have I'll still have access to Jason, but you know, he, he, he's making this move and he can speak for himself and he wants to take on more of a health agent working with Board of Health role and um, very qualified. He's got all his credentials studying for his RS. Um, you know, he's a surf safe instructor and I think it will be a very easy transition to help, you know, stay in this field and a couple other towns and then down the road, identify what role he can play in the towns that already have staff and whatnot. Um, he's, he's agreed to help me with the weekend events coming up, and he still mm -hmm. works the household hazardous waste. And so I'm excited for him, and that opens up an opportunity that Tritown now has to find a full-time mm -hmm. inspector. So if anyone knows anyone, it's on the website, and uh, Jason's shoes will be hard to fill, but 
Yeah, at least we didn't lose him completely. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, so he's, I, I, you know, the collaborative, the towns that really need his assistance and help are going to be in really good hands. So I want to congratulate Jason and for all he's done up to this point for Tritown and I'm excited to see what he does next as he grows into this position. So thank you. Jason. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's congrats. Like a proud pop, I'm gonna cry. Yeah, so we, we did have some good candidates. So I'm hoping those other candidates are interested in you know looking at Tritown. Yeah. But that's what it's all about. Like we're not we're not poaching staff, we're not diminishing capacity, we're actually building capacity. Yeah. And you know, and, and I know, you know, in de department, and I will talk about this Monday at the Tritown okay. meeting, but like you know, Tritown's its own district when we have the collaborative you know i know they're on paper they're sort of two different things but we're kind of intertwined you know tritown needs the collaborative just as much as the collaborative needs tritown it's a mutual you know relationship and you know we without the collaborative we wouldn't have a nurse program we wouldn't be doing car seats and equity work and you know we're this is you know when we I still remember that fall afternoon that Rebecca and I were talking many, many years ago about concepts of where we are today. I would have never thought in a million years we'd be in the position we are now because it's all like ideas and to see that we got a full-time nurse program, coordinate manager, shared agent, helping smaller towns. That's what that what makes me feel really good at night because these towns are really struggling. And I feel so happy that. We got good people out in South County that are really going to make things happen for us. So yeah, I'm really excited. I don't want to interview anymore. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to interview again for new people, yeah. but it is what it is. Thank you. An exalted moment. Right. <clears throat> the vaccine clinic that oh, I was just waiting for you. Yeah. So I will say um, one of the things that is exciting about the vaccine clinic update, and I know Jill's already gone up through most of that, is we did have language support now. And um, they can come in person um, for a set rate per hour. We can call them on the fly. We can schedule calls. And it's like 200 languages. Um, so um, actually, we're going to have a Spanish-speaking translator come to the car seat event on Saturday. And so it's um, well, I'm really happy about that. It's through the state contract. It's very fair. And that is available. Um, and, and so if any of the towns are interested in learning more about that or figuring out how they can incorporate that or have access to that, um, I'm, we're happy to talk to you about that as well. Jane, one question on that. Um, is there a limited number of people that can be accessible? Because, you know, I'm wondering if we can offer, you know, if Rebecca needed access or Jordan needed access, we can add them to the list that they can get a pin number. So basically all I need is the it can be anyone, name and I think email address or job just like it just basically your name and then you, everyone gets an individual pen. So how we get billed is only when we use it. Yeah. And so um if Jordan needed language support, it we would get a report saying Jordan needed language support for Portuguese for 15 minutes and it would give us the, the cost for that. Um, but no, there's no limit to the amount of people that can have access to it. And, you know, um, and it's not, it's not that expensive when you think about the service that you're yeah. providing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you're yeah, interested in getting that definitely. access to that service, you have access to it. I definitely would be. Um, I'm thinking for food inspections primarily, but definitely any kind of inspection. Is that something we could, it's not just flu clinics, right? We could use this for any So you would type have to just function. That's right. Yeah. And it can be, um, you can, so the basic is you call, someone comes in that only speaks Turkish, mm -hmm. you could call, put in your pen and, and, and they would get you in like a 10 minute period, someone who could help you. Mm -hmm. um, you can also schedule Zoom meetings. So you could have like a housing inspection if you had yes. a tablet. Yes. You could have that, but which might be helpful. Do you know what I mean? Um, you can also have them come and then you can also schedule them to come. So there's, and then you can also use it for language, um, for flyers and stuff. Which would, 
yeah. haven't quite gotten there yet. We just we just signed the contract, but we could we probably should send the executed contract to the members so you see what services are provided or some type of back seat maybe. Sure, I, I um, think you know, they so. do charge by the minute, but it's, I think it's reasonable. Is that something that the that I will send that out and then any any of the boards of health that want access to that. And as long as we can keep it in the budget, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll use it that often, but I mean, I think it would be a great collaborative activity. Yeah, so that's my question. Um, sorry, Mike. Um, would individual towns be responsible for, for paying for- No, what? no, just no. The it, collaborative? It's, I, the, the bill will come to me. Okay. So just, I mean, Coming out of the gate, just yeah. which which just be mindful, yeah. Because this if you know if, really if you're doing an hour and a half inspection, yeah. they charge by the minute, right? That, like I said, <laughs> whatever that, it is cents per minute. So, so I think it is the board's decision. The the exec, the board's decision. We do have money, um, similar to what we saw last year. We do have um, specific offense, um, expenses expenses that aren't covered by the grant. Um, we also have specific income that didn't come from the grant. So, um, you know, you all pay through the supplementing policy money in. So, um, and so we have some money. And if that's what the collaborative board wants to use it for, then that's that's kind of that thought process in my mind. So you, we would not be filling you extra money, no. Okay, well, I won't take advantage of that, but no, no, do it. No, that, yeah. that sounds like a which, really which use wonderful it. Use it idea. And we can review, you know, as, as, we, as we roll this out, and hopefully an equity access coordinator is bilingual too. Mm -hmm. We won't have to rely on a third party, right? Although I'm work, really working <laughs> to be bilingual. Um, you know, let's, let's roll it out. And as the bills come in, we'll track them. And then we'll say, hey, we, we just dropped $900 on interpreter services. <laughs> Okay, so let me let me just let me just say two two things. First of all, don't forget the academic public health core, MHOA's group that they have. Uh, if you're doing things on Zoom, they can have an interpreter come into your Zoom. One of the students who is multilingual will come into your Zoom if you if you arrange it with them in advance, and they can do what you're talking about for free. Um, there's that act. There's that and. Um, Jane, you, you you really hit it on the head a second ago when you said that your that your equity access officer should be multilingual. Fernando, the guy that we have on the Cape uh, on the islands, um, goes with the inspectors when they go into the kitchens in in the Brazilian restaurants, and in the and they now have a whole new wave of Spanish restaurants, Spanish based uh, uh, restaurants that are more like taco places and stuff on the islands. And he goes into the kitchens with the inspectors. And that should be part of your job description um, when you're when you're coming up with this equity person, because if you're going to have somebody there who's multilingual, put them to work doing or her to work doing exactly that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I'm, I take your, what you're saying about the academic public health board. I haven't had yet a good experience with working with them. I that doesn't mean, <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't mean that they're not evolving and I'm always happy to provide feedback. It's just nice to have a, a, a contract that they're like, we do this. And then you're like, we need this. And it can happen without a lot of conversation. Um, but definitely, yes, we won't, we won't um, count them out. <laughs> not yet. That's my that that was my uh, MHO uh, MAHB hat that I have to I have to promote them, so mm -hmm. but I don't use them either. So <laughs> that's without the hat. So when Ruby said, "How do we reach out to the farm migrant workers and local Spanish speaking population to come for flu and COVID vaccine clinics?" So um, I've reached out to Vim and Alana and just said, hey, what what are your plans for this year? So they're gonna to continue to provide vaccines to the um, uninsured population because they get all of that through the state. They don't purchase any vaccine. So like last year, Ruby, we um, when they needed vaccine, of course it was free last year. So it's a little different now. We, would, we worked with them quite extensively. They helped us, we helped them. Um, and so, um, and then we also go to the basic meetings. I will say that BIM has, in South County, we're very lucky to have them, um, but we will continue to have those conversations. 
they feel that they're meeting that need right now. But um, if they they we have offered assistance in any way we can, if they decide that that they're not reaching a population, or maybe there's an insured population that um, that Spanish speaking that needs vaccines. Um, I feel like we just like we did through COVID work with them to get specific um, opportunities for us to come in and, and do those vaccines under our program because we can build the insurance. Does that answer your question, Ruby? Yes. Um, my question is that do you have any idea how VIM gets hold of all of the migrant workers? Do they have a wide enough web? to be able to reach out to all of the people that are working on the local farms because there are quite a few of them. You know, I've asked them how they reach out and whether or not they feel like they're reaching everyone. And if, if it seems like there is a need, then we'll work on that because it's really important. Okay. Thanks, Ruby. Is there anything else? that you wanted to talk about um, under old business? Or should we move on to new business? Okay, we can do that. Alternate posting for the Southern Berkshire Public Health Collaborative. So this is something that Mike had talked about last, um, last meeting. Um, it was very interesting to go on to the website and it looks like probably some of the posting um, locations for all of our towns are could be a little bit out of date, which which kind of made me laugh. Um, is So conceptually, is this something, I feel like we have a pretty good system. We send it to the clerks. They've been posting it, I think, for the most part. Is this something that the group wants to um, to work on for the next, you know, for a future meeting, which that is, have um, Tritown be the, the designated posting location and um, we can still post it in the other towns, but that would legally protect us if there was ever an issue. Is that something that the- So, so to quickly expand, Tritown's legal posting location is the town of Lee. We still add it to the Tritown site, but we send out the agendas to every single clerk in the collaborative. And as far as I'm aware, they post it in their designated location. So like, I don't want to make this like a complicated process. I feel like we don't have open meeting law posting issues. We post the stuff well in advance, but Tritown being the fiscal host of the collaborative and the fiscal host for Tritown is Lee and it always gets posted in Lee. Okay, so if, you, if you're always posting it in Lee, that's that's good. But what you'd need to do is is each of your each of your member towns would have to take a vote in this meeting, not today, but you know this group would vote to adopt Lee as its official posting for the PHE group, and then at that point, each of your towns would put on their website probably at the town clerks if the town clerk is 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 who posts for you um some towns do it the board of health itself will actually post but usually it's the town clerk will have a notation on the website that says that uh this town belongs to uh the 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 tri town blah 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 whatever you're calling your your phe group and uh, uh all of our postings can be found on the town of lee's website and then you don't have to do any postings at all except on the Lee website from that point on. Something happened? I think we lost the the meeting. <laughs> I think they disconnected us. I we, I think we lost them, but we're all here together. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Looks like you're the boss right now. <laughs> That's really weird. That 
Hmm. They could have just told me shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I was I was busy writing down what you were saying, and so then I looked up and it was like, where'd they go? Yeah, they're gone. That's like, really. Maybe weird. they're having an executive session right now. Yeah, they said enough of this. Well, I didn't hear any vote for that. <laughs> but maybe they just had an outage. That'd be my we, guess. We had some nasty weather around. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, last night. So maybe their power went out or something. That's really weird. Uh, the storm basically came at 8.30 last night and shut off our Board of Health meeting. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've had none of that. None of that. Yeah, we there was a we didn't we had a little bit of wind and a little bit of rain, but we didn't have the big storm that everybody around us was saying they had. Lee had damage and and Housatonic had damage and New Marlboro had damage and yeah, but we didn't get the bad storm. This the wind came up very quickly, but it also dissipated really quickly. I oh. think I think that they are having that yes. they're having some kind of oh, there they are. There they are, they're coming back. Oops, yeah. sorry. <laughs> It was a lightning storm. <laughs> sure. No, well, we were just we, we were just thinking that I I talk too much or something. <laughs> <laughs> Never, Mike. Well, and we we're short of quorum, so. Yeah, Terry's here. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. Do you want to finish up quickly, or, or should I motion to? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we can finish the meeting. There's no votes or action being taken. We just don't have a quorum right now. Okay. Who do we lose? Uh, Diane had to leave and stuff, so we're down to five. Oh. Yeah. But there's no there's no actions to be voting on, so. Okay. Well, then let's just move quickly. Um, any member updates? I mean, my only thing is, you know, MHOA is coming up and whatnot, and you know, we do have funds in the collaborative to reimburse people for you know for going and whatnot so oh let me just did 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 we send you a thing did mahb send you an invoice yes that's squared away and then like right after they sent me an invoice they sent the invoices again to every single town so i just want to make sure that you know we are paying the bill on behalf of the 12 towns but just make sure you have access to your own town because we did pay the bill I'm glad you told me that. I'll let them know that they did that, and then we'll make sure that that's corrected on our end, Jim. Yeah, because what will happen, Mike, is they'll go to the individual towns, then they'll duplicate the payments. Right, 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 right. So I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen. And if any town does pay it by mistake, we'll make sure that we re refund it. We won't accept the payment. Um, my only thing with like a potential update um, is... We've been seeing in in South County and probably whole countywide um, just some designs that are in the groundwater or 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 aren't meeting the groundwater locations because they're not setting they're not setting the groundwater level or the the bottom of the field is not set at the right elevation is and so one of the things I've been thinking about is maybe putting together once I have time once we once uh, the thirteenth comes and Jason's on board. <laughs> Um, is working on like a worksheet or and then maybe do a little mini training for our inspectors. Is that something you guys would be interested in? Just like in general, like how did you both plan and maybe absolutely I could throw a couple in there that we know are are wrong and like see if, if we can figure out how to be able to visually identify those really important things. I think that would be great. So you guys will be open to that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Yeah. We've had it. As Scott told you about, we've had a lot of different problems with property lines. Um, algins are, are is a huge system problems with the algin systems, mm -hmm. and so it's just all over the place. So there's a system going in right by a library that's going to be like ten feet off the property line and. You know, the property line there is not straight. So, like, this is just, we just dealt with Mr. Martin, who was three feet off the property line, and we went to the state for advice, and they told us whatever. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. If, if anyone 
runs into one of the things we've talked about before is about supporting each other. Anytime someone runs into a septic issue that you need help with, reach out. I, you know, I, I mean, I have a lot of years experience. I've seen the worst of the worst. So don't be afraid to reach out, you know, help to review plans or whatever and offer feedback. Cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, unfortunately, I designers and contractors retiring, we're, we're seeing an influx of like younger, very inexperienced installers and so on and so forth. But there are, you know, there are a handful of people out there still without naming anybody that are not submitting good compliant plans. septic plans. And, you know, we, we have the BCBOHA installer program. I think I'm going to, I got to bring it up at the next meeting. There's some challenges there with who's certified, who's not. We have installers that have a car that is expired, but they're not. We need to kind of get on the same page with that. But I think don't ever be afraid to reach out. You know, housing, whatever. I think we should, I think we're at a good place how we can figure out a way to support each other. Yeah, I feel like we're finally getting to the point where we have the capacity. So awesome. No pressure, Jason. No. <laughs> okay. Any more member updates? Jill, will you be applying for the car seat grant again? So I did the state one. That was in April. You're um, probably sick of car seats. That's what I get. No, <laughs> so I got my car seats. Okay. I'll be out. I'll probably be out after. Or pretty close to out of what yes. I got from the state. Yes. Get 92 all together. I applied for the buck up for life and I didn't get that one. So some money somewhere. Or do Reach some out to fundraising. Some yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but Pittsfield. Um, so it was Pat Trembley, Jamie Zapata, Maria. There's a couple of them up there that got certified. They also got the state grant. So I get a lot of requests from Pittsfield. So once their car seats come in, I can just refer them right to Pat. So like we have a huge Spanish speaking population coming to the car seat event on Saturday. Um, so yeah, which I'm very I'm glad. Okay. Well, think maybe next year. Yeah, I'm definitely going to keep applying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Citizen speak time. Is there anyone on Zoom? This is your chance. Nope. Okay. All right, upcoming trainings. And then the MHOA, the MHOA, is there anyone at this table that might be interested in going to the MHOA conference? Jordan, is that something that you, no, not yet. Okay. Um, okay. I have to talk to my Scott. All right. All right. So it looks like there's three. There's the Mass Local Institute on your own time trainings, Jason. I'm sure you've done those already. Um, the ICS 100 and NIM 700. So I guess those are there just as an FYI, Jane. Well, those are the requirements. Uh -huh. So, okay. <laughs> I just want people to have easy access to those. Um, yeah, and I can take them off, but I, at some point we really do need to start pushing our board members to, to do these. And maybe it's a matter of like having an on a board member meeting and doing the training, you know, mm -hmm. in a nice, situation like this um just so that we're meeting the bare minimum qualifications and we can tick that box off yeah that's always been an idea that's talked about that's never happened is you know specifically for great barrington getting all boarding board members the select board and and board of health in the same room and yes having a public meeting but but doing it together mm -hmm. so um, if you want to organize something like that for the Southern Berkshire Public Health Collaborative, we know that would be a heavy lift, but I think a lot of people would take advantage of that. Okay, great idea. It is a heavy lift, Rebecca, because a lot of our boards are volunteers. Yeah. You know, some are retired, some aren't, and it's just, it's a lot. You know, I, it's, a, it's a lot to take on. I think a lot of my board members are kind of, they got, they got the basics, but the website to get to the training is not easy either. Mm -hmm. It's like pretty ridiculous. Yeah. And so it's, 
I don't know where to go with what I'm saying, but I'm just able to do like a see if we could get for approval to do a Zoom meeting, like at different parts of the day, like a couple of Zoom meetings or something like that, and like have a sign in or um, we do need to continue to look at meeting those qualifications. That's kind of that's the price we pay for the the grant. Um, so okay, yeah. All right, and then next meeting we said will be the first week of November. What is that? Did you say that was November 1st? Oh, after November 1st. Uh, it would be the normal November meeting. The second would be the 10th. Second Friday of November 10th. Okay. Does that work for everybody? November 10th? Oh, hey. That is Veterans Day um, of GERD. Oh, great. So the first week of November. Uh, that works for me. Um, we can look at. Um, well, we could also send out some dates too, and maybe get consensus because there's a lot of people not yeah. here. You know, I can send something out and just say, you know, do we want to have it on? The third and the, or the seventeenth, and I will we, maybe Rebecca can help me check to see if the rooms available for for those dates before sure. send them out. Yep. Okay. Yeah. On that note, um, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make a motion. Jim, so moved. I second. All in favor. No quorum. Okay, that's right. No quorum. <laughs> that, that means we have to stay until oh, we get a quorum. We're done. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you all.